Hey guys, it's Emma. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to continue my video series on some of the most common questions in behavioral interviews. Last time, we looked at the very first question that often gets asked in this type of interviews, the request to introduce yourself. If you haven't watched that video yet, be sure to check it out. For this video's topic, we are actually going to the opposite end of the interview to discuss what is often the very last question in a behavioral interview. In fact, it may appear in any data science interviews. That the question is, do you have any questions for me? It's the end of the interview, you are tired, breathing a sigh of relief and ready to leave so that you can go unwind after being tense for so long. In this state, it's easy to completely overlook the interviewer's final question when they ask if you have any questions for them. That question isn't really part of the interview anyway, right? While this question may not feel as high stakes as the rest of the interview, how you answer will impact the interviewer's impression of you. The last thing you want to do is to leave them with a bad impression, which is why it's so important to consider how you will deal with questions before the interview. There are two things you need to think about in advance when preparing to answer the interviewer's question, and that is if you should ask questions in the first place, and if so, what questions should you ask? In this video, I'm going to cover both. Let's get started. First of all, let's talk about whether you need to ask questions at all. Because it comes at the end of the interview, you will likely be exhausted and branded by the time the interviewer asks you, do you have any questions for me? It can be tempting to say no and get things over with, but not asking any questions is a missed opportunity. Instead, you should aim for a sweet spot of not asking too many, but also not asking too few questions. Why? Asking questions displays an interest in the job. If you don't ask any questions at all, it can imply to the interviewer that you aren't really that interested or you haven't done much research about the company. However, you also need to avoid asking too many questions because that can come across as aggressive. So what's the magic number? I suggest aiming for three to five questions. This clearly shows your interest in the position without overwhelming the interviewer. Now that you know you should ask interviewer questions when given the opportunity, what questions should you ask? There are some basic topics that your questions can cover, including the future vision of the coming, exciting things happening at the coming, types of projects you will be working on, and who you will be working with closely. These are just some general ideas. Translating to actual questions, you might want to ask things like, where do you see the coming in five years? What do you like most about working here? What do you think make this company's culture unique? What major projects is the team I hope to join working on right now? Obviously, those are just some examples I gave to you. You should base your questions on what you really want to know, and those typically come from your understanding of the company and the position. However, that being said, there are several things you want to pay attention to when asking questions. The questions you ask can have a significant impact on how an interviewer perceives you. So I'm going to give you four tips to help you ask good questions and leave a great impression. Firstly, it's very important to ask different questions to different people. Interviewers are people too, which means that they are different. You should not use the same approach nor ask the same questions for every interviewer. When determining what questions to ask, you should specifically consider your interviewer's position at the company. For someone in a higher managerial position, such as a manager or a director, you should stick with broad questions like, what is your vision for the next years of the company? What gets you most excited about working here? What skills and experiences, in your opinion, would make an excellent candidate? For an interviewer who is an individual contributor to the team you are looking to join, you can ask more specific questions such as, what are some interesting projects you are working on? What are the most frequently used programming languages and technologies for data scientists in your company? The second suggestion for asking good questions is to keep it positive. You do not want to come across as whiny or overly critical. No one wants a coworker who complains or who's being too negative. So it's important to keep your questions positive. You may be curious, but it's best not to ask questions about the biggest drawback at the coming or the worst part, the most stressful part of the job. You do not want to appear like someone who looks for the negative side of things. The next thing to keep in mind when asking questions is to avoid bias. We all have our own priorities and ambitions, but you do not want to show those things through the questions you ask. Leave any personal bias out of your questions. This means avoiding asking things like, how many junior and senior data scientists are on your team? 
and how many PhDs are on your team. This also includes mentioning that you prefer to work on specific projects rather than others. For instance, you have a strong preference on modeling projects over analytics projects. Questions like this send a signal that you might not be a good team player and that you may be overly critical of your teammates. The last thing to remember is that you don't have the job yet. There are some questions you may have that you should avoid asking at this stage. The interview is not about working out gritty details, but rather about seeing whether you're a good fit for the company and the team. So don't ask things about vacation time, compensation, bonuses, or other benefits here. You may hurt your chances of getting a job if you ask inappropriate questions for this part of the process. Remember that this is still an interview and keep your questions in that vein. Now let's summarize what we have learned in this video. When the interviewer asks you that final question about if you have any questions for them, you should have a few questions ready. Here are the things to remember when asking those questions. Stick to between three to five questions. Adjust your questions to the interviewer. Keep it positive, avoid bias, and don't ask questions like you already have the job. With these tips, you can end your interview on a positive note. All right, guys, you have learned what questions to ask at the end of a data science interview. As that being said, if you have gone through some interviews and you haven't got the results you want yet, then make sure to hit the notification bell because in the next video, I'm going to talk about how to deal with failures in your job search. Dealing with failures is such an important topic, but not many people talk about it. So again, guys, I want you to hit the notification bell so you don't miss the next video. In the meantime, while you wait for the video to be public, I want you to also check out these two videos right here. I talk a lot about data science compensations and how to negotiate your offers. The tips and the strategies I share will be helpful for you, especially if you are someone who is actively looking for a job in the tech industry. I want you to make sure you check out those videos as well. As always, guys, I appreciate you for watching this video. Feel free to drop me a comment below if you have any questions or feedback. Stay tuned. I will see you soon.